time. Uh, go with me to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. And I'll be reading this out of the Living Bible. Uh, here the Bible says in verse 1, From Simon Peter, a servant and missionary of Jesus Christ, to all of you who have who have our kind of faith. The faith I speak of is the kind that Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, gives to us. How precious it is, and how just and good he is to give us, to give this same faith to each of us. Do you want more and more of God's kindness and peace? Then learn to know him better and better. For as you know him better, he will give you through his great power everything you need for living a truly good life. He even shares his own glory and his own goodness with us. And by that same mighty power, he has given us all the other rich and wonderful blessings he promised. For instance, the promise to save us from the lust and rottenness all around us and to give us his own character. Verse 5, but to obtain these gifts, and that's a big but right there, okay? You need more than faith. You must also work hard to be good, and even that is not enough. For then you must learn to know God better and discover what He wants you to do. Next, learn to put aside your own desires so that you will become patient and godly. Gladly letting God have His way with you. This will make possible the next step, which is for you to enjoy other people and to like them. And finally, you will grow to love them deeply. The more you go on in this way, the more you will grow strong spiritually and become fruitful and useful to our Lord Jesus Christ. But anyone who fails to go after these additions to faith is blind indeed or at least very short-sighted and has forgotten that God delivered him from the old life of sin so that now he can live a strong, good life for the Lord. So dear brothers, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen and then you will never stumble or fall away. And God will open wide the gates of heaven for you to enter into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just like the way the living Bible words it, amen, pretty simplistic. It's easy to understand, not that you are not knowledgeable in, in the other version of the Bible, but I just like the way it, uh, it explains these scriptures, amen. You know, I was thinking about something that a lot of us, I believe, have in common for the most part. Maybe not everyone, but the majority of people uh, whether it be believers, whether it be uh, just people that uh, don't know Christ or don't follow Him. And uh, that common thing or that common desire or goal in the, for the majority of people in the world is this, I believe. Uh, how many would really want to be set for life in all areas of your life, especially finances? Amen. Amen. Now, this is not a message on finances or giving, but just follow along with me for a minute. In other words, to be set for life. I'm sure you've heard that phrase, and uh, many, many people that uh, win the lottery, I know nobody here plays the lottery, um, don't. and if you do pay your tithes, but anyway, and, we, and you've, heard that, you've heard that phrase, they've said, man, I won the lottery, and now I'm set for life. Okay. Never have to worry about finances anymore as far as, well, you know, paying bills and uh, uh, buying things that whatever my heart desires. And, you know, I never have to worry about finances or possession. Come on. That's being set for life. Now, as far as how you and I obtain this thing, I believe most of us really want to remove that worry from our lives, right? To not, I mean, you know, to worry. I mean, we've got enough worries in our life. We got enough to think about and enough to fight against. And one area is like, okay, if I can just be financially comf comfortable and enough where, you know, I don't have to really stress about that, that would really help me, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with wanting that, okay? You know, I don't have to worry about my car note. I don't have to worry about, you know, the rent. I don't have to worry about, you know, 
for the future, you know, save for college, Christmas. Hello, how many are worried about Christmas and how we're going to buy Junior a $500 pair of Jordans? Come on. And all these things, amen. Wouldn't it be life changing if we could be set for life in this area of our lives? Come on. I know January and February is coming, and a lot of us will be happy for a few months. Because, as you know, in those months, that's tax time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, no amen. Nobody wants to say they're getting any money back because I may know. <laughs> but you know what? Did you know Jesus actually spoke of this subject on how you and I can be set for life financially and not to worry about possessions and, and, uh, or the finances to pay bills and to, to have good, healthy financial homes. He says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Right, amen. In other words, Jesus said, if you put me first in your finances, if you put me first in your walk, amen, in your personal life, and your family, you'll be set for life. Right. Hello? You'll be set for life. I'll always take care of you. You will not grow hungry. No. You will not be without. I feed the birds. I, you know what? I'll feed you. How much more are you? My own sons and daughters, right? So right there, you get the scripture that you and I could be set for life financially. But we don't have to worry about food and clothes and all these things that we need in life. Well, Pastor Eddie, that sounds pretty good. I, I mean, okay. But what I really desire, though, is to really, to really be set for life. What does that mean? You know what I'm talking about. In other words, I want to be set for life financially where I can buy whatever I want, when I want. Okay? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But it is bad when it consumes your life to the point of neglecting your salvation and your relationship with Him. Hello? So, you know, because that's what it really is. Because, yeah, we can be financially stable, and, uh, but uh, sometimes we just want more and more. Can we say, can I say amen? Can you say amen? If you notice in the scriptures in the Living Bible, the ones I just read, I think it says like six times more and more. Right? Do you want more and more? But the difference is what Peter is talking about here is more and more of Christ. Right. Yeah, this is where I'm going to lose some right now. Here in the book of Peter, he actually talks about being set for life spiritually. Okay. You better say amen if not, I'm going to go two hours of preaching. Huh? <laughs> You're going to miss the game. Okay. No, I'm not. I got a phone. Now you can talk all day. I'm gonna watch it on my phone right now, <laughs> Hey Siri, turn off that phone. <laughs> I did that one time while I was preaching. I said Siri, and, and then she answered. And so I guess, and they turned it off real quick. Anyway, huh? But Peter talks about you can be set for life spiritually, and it's found in the scriptures we, we just read. Because you, if you were following along. He, he gives you a list, right? He says, but if you to obtain all these things, and you, you know, you need more faith. And he goes on to all these, you know, uh, subjects of what you need to do to be set for life, right? He says, if you do all these things, you will never, ever stumble. I don't know about you. I am thankful for that promise in God's word that I don't have to. Go back to the world and eat my vomit anymore. But the Bible says that, you know what? When we backslide, we're like a dog who returns and eats his vomit. And in fact, it says it in Peter. Okay? I am thankful that I don't have to never stumble. I don't have to go back to jail ever and ever again. And if I go back to jail, then it's simply to minister to those who need Christ in jail. I get to come home after a couple hours. Hello? I'm so thankful, amen, that I never, ever, amen, have to fix heroin ever again and put a needle in my arm. Come on. I'll never have to do that again. I never have to pick up, amen, a bottle of wine, whiskey, amen, 
or anything, any type of alcohol. I never have to worry about that anymore. Because Jesus said, Peter said, if you do all these things, you will never have to do those things. You'll never stumble. In other words, you can be set for life. How many really understand that and really desire that? Because at the end of the day, money is money, wealth is wealth, possessions are possessions, and I enjoy them just as much as you do. And there's nothing wrong with trying to obtain those things to be, you know, stable in those areas. In fact, beyond stable, how many know God blesses you and I financially? Hello. But what happens, He begins to bless us, and all of a sudden, like, hey, this is pretty good. Come on. You're not buying it, 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 ladies, you're not buying the perfume from the Swami no more. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're really getting Chanel number five. Not Chantel number five. <laughs> huh? You're really buying the actual man, man. Hello? Yeah. It's good to have those things. Come on, good that you're able to and there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> but how about the things that come for eternity. You can be set for life. But Jesus also talked about the flip side of this concerning the things that we pursue in life. Okay, And, and unfortunately, the majority of people desire this, is to be set for life financially and possessions. Okay, And Jesus warned us about having this mindset of wanting, amen, that pursuit Okay, he said it's not a good thing. He, what do you say? He said, "What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet lose his own soul?" Right. He said, "Hey, I already got you covered financially. I will feed you and clothe you. I will do all these things for you. You will not go without." I just gave you, but I gave you a clause on how to be set for life. All you got to do is follow it. It's up to you. Now, don't get me wrong. There are millions and millions of people who obtain wealth and finances to the arm of the flesh. Basically, they do it on their own, right? That's cool, okay? But I'm talking to us chickens here who are here in God's house uh, desiring to hear his word for our lives and what he desires for us. And Jesus said, don't, there's nothing, now don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with pursuing these things, okay? But Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain his whole world? What does it profit a man to be set for life and yet lose his own soul? How many men and women have you heard about and seen on the news that were wealthy, that are rich and famous and died at a young age for, the, for only their wealth they mentioned to be distributed to families who didn't give a lick about them? Hello? Yeah. How many know that's what happens if you die wealthy for the most part? If you, you have a will, and sometimes even though you got a will, they know that your sons or daughters or cousins or brothers or uncles and aunts that you give it to, it's not as sure that they're going to spend it the way you would spend it. Come on. You know, like I tell, you know, my wife, you know, babe, you know, if I die, and how many know those be, those got to be the husband died? Why can't come with the wife can't go first? But anyway, that's a whole other story. Okay? I know when I die, you know what? I, I know, you know what? Hey, I know. You know, you're gonna move on and all that, and you know what? You, you idiot. Once, I'm never gonna be married again. I'll never marry one. There's no one like you, my lord. <laughs> but okay, she threw a little cloth. But I will have friends. And I tell my disciples, my wife, maybe you ever see someone drive my white truck, my wet up, okay? Get road rage going on. Beat this bottle down. And get them on my truck. <laughs> Okay, and repent afterwards, okay? Because that's where I roll, even in heaven. <laughs> but understand, uh, but please understand, I'm all for financial stability to this degree. Where you won't go broke and poor if you have an unexpected expense. Because how many of them, has that ever happened to you? You, you, you? Your car breaks, the engine goes out, or uh, you get a flat tire, and now you can't pay the gas bill because you got a flat tire, you know? And there's a, yeah, it's good that we should save and, and, and have money where we don't fall apart. There's not, we need to be like that. Okay? I work towards that for me and my family, but not at the expense of my spirituality and salvation. Huh? My desire has always been to be set for life spiritually. Come on. 
You know, I, I remember years ago, I was talking to a young man who was addicted to drugs, years ago. And I'm obviously familiar with this addic with addiction, and I talked to him for a while, and I explained to him, you know, what you can do to obtain sobriety forever, okay? And, uh, and I also led him to the Lord. I go, well, the first, the first thing you need to do, you relate to Jesus, you need this empowerment because you cannot stay clean on your own. I tried it, and, and I never could stay clean. Maybe brief periods of my life, but for the most part, I could. Once I started using dope and heroin and drugs, all these things, I could never get off of it. I go, and I needed, I needed divine power to, to keep me from these drugs, these drugs. And I said, you need Jesus Christ first. So he gave it back to the Lord, and I explained to him all these things you must do, okay, to keep you sober, to keep you saved, right? I said, you do all these things, you'll never, ever have to go back to drugs again. Because I may know, amen, the percentage of people relapsing in addiction when they're drugs or alcohol, you know, never, it's a, it's a small percentage. Uh, the, 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 for the most part, most have relapsed at least once. All I'm saying, in 30 years, I have not relapsed one time. But it's not more to me, it's because I did all these things. And I read scriptures like I just read in Peter that if you do all these things, it says you shall never stumble. Yeah. Now, I'm not referring to eternal security where many there are many doctrines or there's this doctrine in many churches that preach that once you give life to Jesus, you're forgiven. And if you return back into your, into your sin, you are still saved. Okay, you you know it's you know you're just gonna you're just gonna experience consequences on earth, but you're still saved. Uh, we don't believe in that doctrine, amen. Because we feel that you can't fall away according to the scriptures, amen. Where the Bible talks about it in the Old Testament, where it says that God says, "I will heal your backsliding." So there's a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to the into this doctrine debate. Well, all I'm saying though that uh, if you do all these things that the scriptures give to you and I on how to live on this earth, amen, and how to abstain and, and, and from sin, then you'll never have to stumble. Yeah. Huh? If I choose, amen, and if I go back to drugs or sin, it's not because God, amen, failed me, and because I failed to live according to the scriptures, which so easily gives you and I the instructions on how to live on this earth as his sons and daughters without returning to sin. It's, I mean, that's why I read the scriptures here in Peter in, in, the, in the Living Bible because it's pretty self-explanatory if you're following along. Even in the New King James Version, whatever translation, amen, it says here, you shall never stumble if you do these things. Come on. You know, I was reading a story about a man uh, he had came back to the Lord. And this was back in the 30s and 40s. And this, and I, I wrote down his quote or this experience he had in his life. He was a homeless guy. And, uh, he was uh, living on the streets. And one day he, he, he made it to Pennsylvania. And this is what he's quoted as saying. I got off at the Pennsylvania Depot as a tramp. Now tramp I means, back in those days it means hobo. Now what it means now? Okay. All right. We'll do that. Okay. <laughs> And for a year, I begged on the street for a living. One day, I touched a man on the shoulder and said, Mister, could you spare me some change? As soon as I saw his face, I recognized that it was my father. Father, don't you know me? I asked. And throwing his arms around me, he cried, I have found you. And all I have is yours. Think of it. That I, a tramp, a beggar, stood begging my father for some change. When for 18 years he had been looking for me so he could give me all he was worth. For 18 years his father was looking for him to give him all that he had. Hmm. You know, like this man, sometimes we too settle for a life of begging. Trying to do things our own way. Hoping for some spare change. Come on. Uh, some spare change so we can satisfy our hunger. We're just like a squirrel just trying to get some nuts. <laughs> Remember that saying? 
Come on, I'm just a squirrel trying to get, I'm just trying to, you know, let's try to come up here, you know. And there we go, begging, borrowing, and stealing to obtain all these things, amen. And all the while, our Heavenly Father is looking for us. He's wanting you and I to realize, hey, I've already given, okay, everything you need for this life and the next. But if you, but you got to do these things. I'm just waiting to give you all that is worth, that I am worth. Oh, I learned that. 30, over 30 years ago, that day Jesus found me in that gutter. The whole time I've been begging, well, I'm do this, well, I'm trying, trying, you know, and then finally I got tired of it, I'm trying to make change in my life, and I'm, I'm doing all these things, and nothing's working. And the whole time, my Father in Heaven was awaiting me. And the day I gave my life, says, you know what? Here you go. Here you go. All you had to do was look up, my son. It reminds me of the story, the one we all know too well, the prodigal son, right? Here's a young man that had, he was set for life, right? Because his dad was rich and wealthy and they had servants that were set for life. But how many know sometimes we want more and more? Maybe he left, wanted to leave because his dad had rules and regulations. He had standards in his home and, and they were there to protect him. Because I'm no parent, the, the standards we have in our home, are not for us, but they're there to protect our children, right? You parents, hello? Well, they're there, amen, to protect them. Because we want good things for them as they grow up, right? Huh? So this young man, amen, he wanted more. This was, you know what, I want to be on my own. I want to be on my own. I don't want to be told anything. I want to spend my money the, my own way. You know what, you guys are too strict. You're too rough. Let me share with the youngsters, amen. When you go out there on your own, guess what? Toilet paper costs money. Okay, well, I'll go to the dollar store. Well, go, go to the dollar store. After a while, you'll realize when you're all full of rash and full of red mark. You're like, man, I want me some white. I want me some shine. Oh. But you can't afford it, amen, because you're on your own. You didn't realize that all these things cost money. Hello, remember that Doug movie, okay? Step Brothers? Yeah. Was there a to do the home? <laughs> they got kicked out of the house? Yes. And what's his name? Will Farrell didn't know that you have. They, 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 you have to buy toilet paper. Remember that scene? I won't get you too graphic here. I'll do that the TBS version. Okay. And you know, use the carpet, use water. Remember what you had? To do? Okay. Anyway. And there he goes coming out of Costco with all kinds of toilet paper. He didn't realize. Hey, wow! To be alone, it costs money to buy toilet paper. Huh? Come on. Yeah. Electricity and gas, right? So this young man and 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 you know in Luke 15. Right? He, he, he was set for life. I mean, he had a great and loving father who cared for him, who provided for him. All he had to do was maintain it. One day he would be on his own. He would make his own decisions. Amen. And you know what? But no, I want my inheritance and I want it today. Dad, Pop, give it to me. We know what happened. We gave it to him. He was set for life. And he took all his inheritance. How many know people that have gotten blessed, whether through a settlement, the lottery, and they're broke within one year? Come on. Think about this. Next year, when you get your income tax, how long is that money going to last? Some of you will get five, ten grand. Okay? How long is it going to last? If you're smart, you'll invest it. If you're smart, amen, you'll do something good with it for the future. Come on. Yeah. This young man will sit for life. But no, when at the end of the day, he settled for change and begging on the streets, remember? To the point where he could not get any food, so he was eating with the pigs, remember that? He found himself in a dirty, stinky pig pen, eating with they eat. I grew up on a, on a ranch farm in, in the country, and we had pigs. They are dirty, they are smelly, they are stinky, and we would we do we give them slop. You know what slop is? Okay, it's common gel soup. No, no, what it is, slop, amen, <laughs> is you just put everything together, tortillas, lettuce, amen, <laughs> leftover chicken, amen, leftover bacon, beans, and rice, a little bit of Jesus Christ. There you go. <laughs> the Bible says he found himself, he said, Man, I messed up. I was set for life. Paraphrasing it. I had it going on. Huh? All I had to do was be obedient. My father had taken care of me. 
All I had to do was just follow it, follow the instructions they gave for me. I mean, he didn't force me. I was blessed. He goes, man, <laughs> I got a bounce from this pig pen. And he said, all right, hey, he asked for forgiveness of his father and the father in heaven and prayed God, what happened, amen? He came back home, his dad was waiting for him, and they said, we're gonna throw a barbecue, call the neighbors, you know what, get the fatty calf, here's my ring, and this and that. He said, and thank God for a restoration. But how many know you don't have to go through that? Why go through that? And I get it. We have circumstances and we have thoughts in our brain and we have these. You know, the Bible says that all men are right in their own eyes. You might be thinking you're doing the right thing, but if it leads you away from Jesus and away from the things of, that he has blessed you with, it's the wrong thing. All right, amen. Okay? He has set you for life, spiritually. Life. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even as Christians, it's amazing how we sometimes survive on so, on so little of a way of a spiritual nourishment. Really. How, you know, as Christians, sometimes we're barely surviving spiritually. We we're barely taking a little intake of spiritual nourishment. And this is why we are unstable and double-minded at times, amen, because we're pursuing, and don't get me wrong, uh, we need to pursue. The Bible says, amen, if you don't work, you don't need. The Bible says, amen, that if if you're a, the father and a husband, then they, that if you don't provide for a family, you are worse than an infidel or unbeliever. I know the scriptures, amen. But not at the expense of your own spirituality and salvation. Okay? It's so simple. I learned this concept. The first year I gave my life to Jesus, when he says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek me first, and my righteousness, and all these things that you are worried about, okay, I'll give them to you. All right, I tried it my way. Left me penniless, broke on the streets. Let me try this. And the first time, amen, I got paid in, the, in our men's home and I did a job and they, I got blessed with $300. Or I worked for $300. And my pastor looks at me and goes, what do you want to do with it? Well, first of all, I'm going to give my tithe. Okay, I, the first time I gave my tithe, I didn't know, you know, I, 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 10%. But I go, no, pastor, you know let me, I want to give an offer, so here's 100 Ties and offering. Okay, first time experiencing uh, the giving, of giving to God. Well, you got 200 left. You want to send it home to your kids, to your girl, whatever. But no, you know what? I go to the sister of the church. Uh, I, I, I got to work on a car, but she can't afford the part. Sister so and so. I go, yeah. I go, I want to buy the part for her. I do the work for, for free. Okay? So I did that because I was so thankful and grateful, amen, that, you know what? I, was, I didn't go use that 300 to get a, some dope. Huh? And I did that, and I learned something because after that, I got blessed more and more. It was like, wow, you know, this is a new revelation of how God blesses people. I had never experienced it, obviously, because, you know, I never applied to my life, and I never gave them a chance. And there I go. And here I am, 31 years later, blessed and Amen. blessed more. Amen. But one thing, I, I was always careful. Oh, okay, let me tell you something. You know, God gives us wealth. He gives us wisdom. He gives us stability and discipline. Well, we can make some money and we can do a lot of things. You know, we, we gain our self-respect again. People begin to respect us. We work hard. And you can get promoted. You can have things. Like my handman business, trust me, if I were, I don't even advertise. I don't advertise because, you know, just word of mouth, that's enough for me. And I said, Lord, you bring whatever you're going to bring. Amen. And all these years, there we go. Call, text, you know, da, da, da. And I've been blessed by it, but I never let it become, you know, because I could have made it, you know, and I've always tried to like, okay, you know what, I don't want to do it, but I can get a brother who knows how to, he knows how to do things I do. I'll give him the truck, I'll give him the, the resources, the connections, I got all this. You know what, you can do it for you, you know what, just break break a little brother off over here, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know business. Uh, but people are scared because, oh man, you know, I really get that check and bi-weekly. We keep it bi weekly. Because I get a bi weekly check in, in two days. Amen. Okay? But all glory to God. Amen. Hmm? But here Peter says, okay, why do you pursue all those things? It might not be, maybe it's not wealth or finance. Maybe it's just a good relationship. How many know we need us some good relationships? If you're a young man, young woman, we need some good relationships. 
Hello? Yeah? But it's taking everything out of you. you you're exhausted. You have no more energy. You are discouraged. But I'm in love. Hmm? You're in love. And that's true. Cause my wife was in love with me and I was in love with her in spite of the hell I put her through. Hello? Lucy, she lost everything because of me. Not because of her, because of me. Come on. I love her so much, I had to leave her. I could not do that to her no more. I had to go pursue that which had basically took it over my life. That day, remember it? They were take me to the Fresno, take me right there to Chemical City, Belmont and Maple, drop me off in the apartments right there. I go, this is where I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna get dropped off. And hopefully I live to see the next day, the next week. And I remember that, that car driving off. I said, man, what am I doing? But I had to do it because I loved her. And I didn't want to hurt her no more. Because I wanted to pursue that. Yeah. Love. But how many know, amen, like the prodigal, God found me in the pig pen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And before he knew it, I was singing Roy Roseanne song. Reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> She began to pursue, she began to pursue me in the man's song. You <laughs> Huh? Yeah. She asked me to marry her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now I'm getting, getting, not getting stupid enough. All right. <laughs> but the common denominator in both our relationship, because we weren't together yet, and you know, we started to talk to each other as I was in the man's home, is that we were putting God first. Get it? Right. She was going. She went back to church, and the whole time I was with her, I never knew that she was in church growing up. That she was a backslider. I never knew that. She never told me. Me it was the first time getting saved when I went to the home. I had never experienced Christ. I was not religious at all. And but one thing is that the common denominators that we decided to serve God. She was over here, and I was over there. She's going to church. I'm going to church. Amen. We pursued Him, God. And God brought us back together. Okay? Amen. And here we are, set for life. Amen. And the only way we will ruin this relationship will be out of foolishness and stupidity and selfishness. Because people are selfish. Amen. Marriages and relationships break up because of selfishness. Amen. That's the number one reason. It's not because of, it could be yeah, money, kids, in laws, sex, whatever. It could be all these things. But at the end of the day, it is based. On a foundation of selfishness. Amen. Right. This is what I want. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. So let me move on here real quickly. Amen. So here in Peter, it's, he says, look, you do all these things, you shall never stumble. You're good. Okay, I got you. Huh? If you want more, but you got to want more and more of me. You gotta want to increase your faith more as you read the scriptures, right? He says all this things, amen. And verse three, it says what? You know, hey, uh, that the way we are set for life spiritually, in verse three, it says simply that through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Basically, amen, we are set for life if we get to know him better, know God better. Amen. The majority of people have knowledge of God, right? In the world, I knew there was a God, okay? But here, what the word knowledge is not so much in facts, okay? It's more about a relationship of knowing Him. Hello? Of getting to know God. It's amazing, this relationship with Christ. The, the way it's amazing because I have a relationship with the sovereign God, the God that created the heavens and the earth and the universe, right? And I think to myself, I have a real relationship with him. I don't see him, obviously. Okay. Uh, does he speak to me? He speaks to me uh, many times in dreams. He puts thoughts into my mind and heart. Discernment. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and so I get to know him like that. And I say, wow, I know God. Now you might think that's like a sim simplistic statement. But think about it. You know who God is. Come on. You, why do you pray to Him? Because you don't know Him? Because you know Him. 
Because you've experienced when he answers your prayer. Right. You have experienced his keeping power. Oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about. You experience it. You're about to go off. You're about to get in your car and, and head towards the sunset. You're about to leave God, church, homeboy, homegirl, kids, dog, cat, friends. You're up to a year. And somehow, some way, God keeps you from doing something stupid, yeah. sinful. Because he knows you and you know him and he loves you and he goes after you. Come on. You ever had a fatal attraction where a person will jump on your car and won't let you go? I don't know what I would say amen. <laughs> uh, you go to TikTok. You'll see a bunch of that. They're hanging on the car. I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> I think I did that once. Did I that one oh, no. I got thrown on the car. <laughs> the phone. But I came back. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll persevere. Know God who he is. We have knowledge of God. How do we get to know God? Through his word. Why well, do you need more? No, no. All you need is his word. Through his word. But also, you get to know God by knowing Jesus Christ, his son. But how do you get to know Jesus Christ, his son? We'll start off in the gospels. This is not basic, this is basic information, but a lot of us, I think, sometimes really need to hear this, that you want to really know who uh, God is? Well, know his son. and know his son through the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll learn about his compassion, his concerns, and you'll learn about his character. Come on. This is how you get to know him. How can you give it out to someone that you don't know? Huh? Uh, you get to know him through prayer. Prayer is our life source. Okay. One common denominator of those who go back and forth in the world and go back and forth in sin, one common denominator is this. They lack prayer or not praying at all and they stop praying. Mm -hmm. They become religious. Remember back in the day? We did that and thought that was enough. And I'm not trying to put down Catholicism, but we should do those things. It was ritualistic. It was just tradition. Okay? Or, you know, or we go by the church. And we, to us, that was our, that was the extent of our relationship. When we went by the Catholic Church, we do the side of the cross. And then we pick up the joint and the beard after we left his presence, right? Yeah. Amen. All of a sudden, we're real holy in about 10 seconds. <laughs> 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 Come back, kid, man. Oh. oh my God! <laughs> you remember, sister, you used to sit next to your husband or your boyfriend? Oh, you remember? Yeah. <laughs> That's all. <right. laughs> what happened to Paso? Uh, remember that story? You remember that? the story? The the, the wife complaining. And, you know, she's like, man, you know, like, you're not romantic anymore. And they're driving, they're going to Walmart, and they're, you're not, you know what, you're not romantic no more. And, man, you know what, you just, I don't know, you, you don't give me attention. And, and I remember when we used to, remember we'd go, when we, we drove somewhere, and, you know, we would sit right next to each other, like a Siamese twin, just two next, remember? Almost on top of each other. <laughs> and the husband, so eloquently and so calmly, says, well, who moved? He's still in the same position. She's the one that moves. So sisters, get back on your, on your man's lap again. <laughs> so we can have revival. <laughs> but nowadays, they don't make cars like that no more. That's their excuse, huh? There's no more long bucket seats, remember, Leo? That's the old school, the Chevys, they had a yeah, long seat. You've been about three, four women right there. You almost... <laughs> <laughs> They're all friends. <laughs> uh, my one, my two, my three, my four. <laughs> oh, Pastor Andy. Don't quit talking smack. I was looking at that one hookah at one time. <laughs> so come on. Leave him on. How do we get to know God? Obviously, by knowledge of Him, but it's got to go through the scriptures, through Jesus Christ and who He is. You find out, oh, His characteristics and attributes are right here. Huh? Yeah. Through praise and worship. This is where a lot of people kind of, a lot of believers kind of lack. Why 
why do God's people, why are they reluctant or maybe, what's the word, a little timid when it comes to worship and praising? Why is it so hard for us to, it's okay to let your hands in church. You know why I sit up here during song service? Because I want to worship God. I don't want no distractions. I leave my phone in the office. Come on. <laughs> my wife said, I'll leave. You know why? Because that's the only time I leave it away from me. <laughs> the rest of the time is like stuck to my ear. I go to bed with the sleep with it because the people always call me. But anyway. <laughs> huh? Worship and praise. Get, this is how you get to know God. Think about it. When you bring, now, when you praise your, your significant other, doesn't it bring, isn't there like closeness to that person? When you, I'm going to say worship them and bow down. But when you really, you want, you, you want to get close and you, call, you compliment them and you're nice. Come on, you're, you're compassionate. You're sensitive, man. You're sincere. You're not selfish, brute. Just hardcore. Come on. But you sisters too, wait, man. You got to do your part too. Hello? Remember back in the days, you go to bed and you know, put on a little nighty and you just keep your makeup on. <laughs> well, now you go to bed like a like like a like a terrorist, like ISIS. <laughs> man, you got a bandana, you got a fire, you got a man, you covered up for men. So, man, what are you? A I'm sitting with a terrorist, or, or, or you go to bed with boxer, they men a pelican. Man, I, I was with my homeboy. Was he? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hello? I don't know whoever invented moves. That all thought to be hanged and killed. Huh? We're talking. I don't know why I went that way. Oh, praise and worship. But how many God, He reveals Himself in so many ways in our life. He, he makes it evident that He is with us. Amen. Right? He makes it so evident, I am with you. The fact you're here today is evident that He's with you. But who in God's earth, when did, in, in God's earth, would you ever thought you'd be in church listening to the Word of God, worshiping and investing into His kingdom? Who would ever thought that you would be doing that? I never thought that. But I realized God came upon me and He forgave me and loved me. And now that he's with me, it's like, wow, come on. Mm -hmm. He's with us. If not, what's the point of being here? Come on. So my last point here is that in what we, in what we read here, there are five big promises that God gives his people in the scriptures we just read. And if you embrace these, okay, and believe them and have faith in them, you'll be set up for life spiritually. And the obvious one, verse 4 says, He has given us very great and precious promises. Right? The Word of God is full of promises, and I may know, amen, it is rare in our day for a person to keep their promise. Come on, dads, how many promises have you made to your kid? I will take you to so and so after church next week on Friday. How many of you have broken it? Come on. But God does not break his promises. Okay? So, what promises are we talking about? Well, in 1 John 1 9, he says, I will forgive you. Here, the Bible says you have the promise that he will pardon you and forgive you of all sin. Oh, I like that promise, but I need that one. Hmm? Jeremiah 31, 34 says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. I thank God that God does not remember my sin anymore. Amen. Okay, he's forgiven me of my wickedness. And the Bible says he has tossed it into the sea of forgetfulness. He'll never bring it up no longer. Now, that's a promise. You don't have to live in condemnation and guilt. Whatever you've done in the past and you repented of it, that's going to forgive you. He has for, not only has he forgiven you, he has forgotten it. Amen. Not like some people say, I forgive you, but I ain't forgetting it. <laughs> well, no, that's for you, sisters, because you guys got memories like elephants. <laughs> Isn't it true, man? Yes. She, 
can give you an instance back in 2007 when you said something disrespectful, she can tell you what you were wearing. Okay, every detail, it is embedded in her memory, amen, forever and ever. She can give you verbatim exactly what you said and how you said it. You can't even lie to her. And what makes it worse for me is my wife keeps journals. I'm not lying. That's why she's laughing. If I go home today, December the 3rd, at 2.30, and I say something stupid, and get in an argument, she'll go to her, in her she shack, go on her calendar, and he I learned this long. You know how I learned this? You know how I learned this? That she was doing this? Because one day, I, she go, hey, you change your oil in the car. I go, yeah, I just changed it last month. Oh, let me go check. So, hey, check what? To go pray? That's got your revelation? No, you changed the car. You changed the oil like two years ago, buddy. It wasn't last month. I said, what? This girl's keeping journals. Oh, Lord Jesus. Pray for me. your pastor. Oh, <laughs> oh, but he gives us promises. He forgives us. He won't bring it up anymore. He even promises his presence in every situation that you fall your, that you fall upon, whether it's good or bad. He says, "What? I will never, ever leave you or forsake you." In fact, he told Joshua, "As I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I will never or leave you or forsake you." Also, he told that to Joshua. God will always be there. I'll be in your presence. Okay? You will feel my presence in all the things in life that are difficult. And I'll be with you even in the joyful times. Come on. He said also too, I'll always provide for you. He says, amen, in uh, Philippians 4.19, I will take care of you. Amen. Psalm 37, 5, 25 says this, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Think about it. For you, amen, that give your life to God, did you ever have to beg for anything anymore? Ask the money? Or... Now, I'm not saying, hey, nothing wrong going to the, to, the, to the grocery line, food line. It's all right. Hey, you're getting a free aid. Hey, in fact, you know what? I love that cheese they give you. Now. That government cheese? Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> hey, 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 there's nothing wrong with blessings. But how do you know God is not, as believers, we don't beg for bread no more. We don't have to beg for anything. He takes care of us. Yeah. Come on. He says in Philippians 4.19 also, And my God will meet all your needs according, according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. He also promises something else as I close here. Power. Empowerment. He says what? I will pour out my spirit on you. Hello? You have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, man. Where you will not have to fall back into sin. He says, I will empower you. The book of Acts, amen, chapter 1. I will empower you. Amen. This is a promise that we definitely need in our lives, amen. That power that keeps us, amen, from falling back to sin, from falling back, amen, to anything that would harm our lives. He says, I will give you power. Come on. And the greatest promise ever, he says, that I will come for you. How many know Jesus is Coming back for you tonight in the rapture. John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back. Right. And take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Hello? So here as I close, amen, you and I this afternoon can be set for life spiritually. And I'm not talking about eternal security, but I'm talking about Amen. If we apply the scriptures and the standards in his word from 2 Peter that I read and beyond, amen, there's nothing, amen, that can keep you, amen, all right, from the love of Christ. He said that in Romans 2. Nothing, amen, trials, tribulations, nakedness, famine, all these things, amen. You know what? You're set for life even through those difficult things you go through. Come on. Oh, but here we go, amen. People just got to, they, they, they want to be set for life in the material possessions and finances, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but not at the stake of your salvation or your spirituality, amen. Amen. You're doing it the hard way. Do it the easy way through God, amen.
Hezbar has a scepter. 